Hi, this is Simon, and welcome to another marvellous video. The upcoming appearance of Blue Beetle in a movie is causing a buzz in the DC Comics community. But today, we are not focused on the Blue Alien Beetle with armour. Today, we'll be talking about a look at his arch nemesis, the Black Beetle. Just as Batman has Joker and Superman and has Lex Luthor, Blue Beetle is his counterpart in Black Beetle. This dark iteration of the Beetle is a resident of the future Earth. So, fasten your seatbelts as we dive deep to explore the origins of the Black Beetle. But before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, then please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you, and let's begin. Uncovering the origins of the Black Beetle, a DC Comics supervillain. Black Beetle is a character first introduced in the pages of Booster Gold, Volume 2, Issue 5, in 2008. The character was created by Jeff Johns, Jeff Katz, and Dan Jurgen. He is a villain from the future who uses a scarab and is part of a group of supervillains known as the Time Stealers. When he first appeared, he was disguised as a future Blue Beetle and approached Booster Gold in a time sphere and proposed that they travel back in time to save Ted Cord, the second Blue Beetle, from being killed by Maxwell Lord. Rip Hunter advised against it, saying that Ted's death is a fixed point in time that cannot be changed. Despite Rip Hunter's warnings that Ted Cord's death was a point of unalterable, solidified time, Black Beetle convinced Booster Gold to team up with him. Dan Garrett and Jaime Reyes go back in time and prevent Ted's murder. The group successfully saves Ted, but upon returning to the present, they discover that their actions have changed the timeline, resulting in the entire world being policed by Max's Omax. While trying to repair the timeline with the help of their former Justice League international allies, Booster and Ted are ambushed by Black Beetle who reveals that he is part of the Time Stealers. During the fight with Black Beetle, Ted realizes that the only solution to restore the timeline is for him to return to the past and accept his fate of being killed. Black Beetle attempts to prevent Ted from sacrificing himself, claiming that he is Jaime Reyes's arch nemesis and that Jaime is responsible for taking someone important from him. He discloses that he had followed the Time Stealers scheme to save Ted, to alter the past and stop Jaime from becoming the Blue Beetle and causing the important person death. Later, Ted and Black Beetle both enter and trigger the Time Stealer's time sphere. After that, it was disclosed that Ted had successfully restored the timeline while there was no sign of the Black Beetle. Following the events, a backup story titled Origins and Omens in Booster Gold issue 17 hinted at Black Beetle's return and the revelation of his real identity. In the last part of Blue Beetle's volume 2, Nadia, a member of Jaime's technical team, is slain by the Kajidar Revolutionary Army, a revolutionary organization of reach infiltrators driven by Jaime Scarab. As a result, Nadia's brother Hector blames Jamie for her murder and flees the country in a rage. Subsequently, it is uncovered that Hector has merged with the real technology taken from the infiltrators, granting him the potential to possess comparable powers to Jaime. He had adopted the name Joshua, which was based on Joe Zar, the previous possessor of his scarab, who was also a Kaji Dar Revolutionary Army member. Interestingly, this is the same name utilized by Black Beetle during his earliest appearances, which has led to speculation about the villain's true identity. Hector's use in the story is meant to generate curiosity about the Black Beetle character as future plotlines unfold concerning him. When the Black Beetle finally confronts Jaime, he initially asserts that he is Hector and that Jamie is to blame for Nadia's demise. However, he quickly withdraws this claim and instead proclaims that he killed Hector and appropriated his technology. In a subsequent issue, he asserts that he is Jaime's future self, who went insane after being assaulted by a brain damaged Milagro. The hard way. The Menace Unleashed, Black Beetle's storyline in Young Justice and his impact on the series. Black Beetle is a prominent antagonist in the second season of the animated superhero television series, Young Justice. He is a member of the Reach, an extraterrestrial race that is bent on conquering and enslaving other worlds. He is a formidable warrior with incredible strength, durability and the ability to manipulate energy. He is ruthless, cunning and always focused on his mission. Black Beetle has an extraterrestrial 
terrestrial exoskeleton, resembling blue beetles except for its color and more massive build. However, he is a member of the initial reach species, a humanoid alien with light green skin beneath his armor. He is hairless, has red eyes, and lacks a nose. In the episode titled Alienated, Black Beetle secretly entered the Molina Island base during the conflict between the Justice League, the Crolateans, and Manta Troopers. While the Crolateans and Manta Troopers fought with the heroes, he positioned an explosive device near the Crolatean spaceship in the lower section of the base. Kuldor later advised him to terminate the mission as the base had been compromised, but Black Beetle revealed that the bomb was already armed, and only five minutes were remaining for evacuation before it detonated. In the next episode, while observing the Appalachian Golem's attack on the Arlington nuclear power plant, Black Beetle and Sportsmaster noticed that the creature appeared to be considering an alliance with Blue Beetle and Superboy. To prevent this from happening, Black Beetle opted to utilize a unique sonic ray to annihilate the Golem, causing it to explode. In the episode titled Bloodlines, Beetle and the scientist oversaw the neutron experiment from a central city warehouse. The scientist closely monitored the energy levels and metagene, expressing concerns about the potential for power overload that could disrupt the system. When Flash, Kid Flash, and Impulse launched an attack on Neutron, the Reach's control device implanted with the subject was damaged. Consequently, they could no longer regulate Neutron's actions, prompting them to absorb the experiment and withdraw. Next, we see Black Beetle in the 10th episode, which was titled Before the Dawn. Here we see him make his way to the laboratory containing Jaime Reyes and his scarab aboard a Reach vessel. He participated in a conversation with the Ambassador and the Scientist. Later, Black Beetle proposed that the Scientist reboot the Defense Scarab lodged in Jaime's body. This would entail forcefully removing the Scarab, resulting in Jaime's death. However, Black Beetle was not concerned, as he believed numerous potential hosts were available. During the team's infiltration of the ship to free the abductees, Black Beetle confronted them in the docking bay and sealed them inside. He cruelly laughed at Wonder Girl's threats and defeated the assembled team members, including Superboy, Robin, Wonder Girl herself, Bumblebee, and Lagoon Boy. He was also about to engage Batgirl in combat when Blue Beetle intervened by opening the hatches. Despite initially fighting evenly, the final exchange between the two Beetles caused them to be thrown apart. With the room rapidly filling with water, Black Beetle was forced to abandon his pursuit of Blue Beetle when he rescued Shimmer from drowning by sealing off the ship. Upon learning of the presence of several team members in one of the hydrophonic domes, Lex Luthor informed Black Beetle, who arrived to confront them. For the majority of the altercation, Black Beetle held the advantage, though Arsenal was able to inflict some harm on his armor using his laser. Although the team members could not flee the dome, Black Beetle caught up with them. Another Reach individual in armor intervened and engaged Black Beetle in combat, with Black Beetle initially gaining the upper hand. However, with the team's assistance, Blue Beetle and the newcomer, Green Beetle, devised a plan to overpower Black Beetle and allow the team to escape. During the events of the Hunt episode, Black Beetle launched an attack on a group of runaway metahumans who had come to the status chamber to free the team. Although he was able to defeat them quickly and easily, he was caught off guard by a surprise assault from Arsenal. Realizing that they couldn't engage Beetle directly, Arsenal instructed the others to use hit-and-run tactics to keep him off balance. After freeing Mongol from his status chamber, Arsenal and the teams were able to distract Beetle long enough for Mongol to engage him in combat. Both were bitter over the losses sustained by their respective fleets, with Mongol having lost Warworld and Beetle having suffered at the hands of the Justice League. With the team successfully freed, Arsenal and the Runaways made their escape, while Mongol and Black Beetle were preoccupied with their duel. In the following episode, Black Beetle and Mongol were still locked in combat when Green Beetle appeared on the scene. Together, the two Beetles were able to subdue Mongol and return him to his status chamber. However, when Black Beetle went to retrieve the crystal key from the storage chamber, he discovered that it was missing. Despite Black Beetle's insistence on launching an attack against the Leaguers guarding the chamber, the Ambassador refused to allow it. Instead, the Beetles were left to protect the key chamber from the outside and prevent any potential thieves from accessing it. This duty left Black Beetle frustrated and undervalued as a mere security guard. During the Reach Light Summit, Black Beetle was present as the Ambassador raised a complaint about the light, allowing the team to access the Bialan Temple. When Calder Arm requested to speak, Black Beetle objected, causing Black Manta to become angry. However, Vandal Savage and the Ambassador overruled Beetle, and Kuldor explained that Reach had not given them enough information to understand
understand the temple's significance. The scientists attempted to agree, but were stopped by the ambassador's glare. The light then began listing the Reach's failures, leading to a confrontation between Beetle and Manta that escalated in a fight involving other combatants. Calder broke up the fight, reminded them of the true enemy, but Black Beetle was unhappy and released the trapped Reach guards. After that, Ra's al Ghul revealed Tigress's true identity as Artemis during a conversation with her. The ambassador quickly realized that Kaldor must be a double agent. Black Beetle found it amusing that Aqualad had deceived everyone, including his own father. The ambassador ordered Beetle to kill them, but Deathstroke shot both of them before Beetle could act. Kaldor was holding a dead man's switch, which activated a holographic message revealing that the light had been manipulating the Reach from the start. The ambassador threatened to use the Warlord on Earth, but Vandal Savage revealed that he had the crystal key. Miss Martian revealed herself as Deathstroke and held Savage at sword point. Other team members entered the cave and the brain sealed it and called for reinforcements. However, there were more hidden team members among them. During the battle, Black Beetle fought against Superboy and Wonder Girl. However, they posed no significant threat to him and he quickly threw them aside. When Vandal Savage and Clarion teleported away, Ra's al Ghul said that they need not resist because the heroes had no jurisdiction. This angered Beetle who declared that members of the Light were cowards as he impaled Al Ghul through the chest, seemingly killing him. The ambassador and scientist attempt to escape, but Blue Beetle stopped them by pinning them to a wall. The ambassador pleaded for Black Beetle's assistance. Black Beetle, however, saw the ambassador's vulnerable situation and relieved him of his duty, according to Article 16 of the Reach Planetary Acquisition Code, due to his repeated failures. Beetle freed the scientist, seeing potential use in her, and took her with him as they fled. The ambassador was left behind to be captured. After that, Black Beetle and the scientist watched a news report on the Reach flagship, announcing that the United Nations had decided to revoke the Reach's permission to remain on Earth. The scientists then asked about leaving behind proof of their breach of the Reach Guardian Agreement, but Beetle was not concerned and assured her that they would destroy Earth before they left. In the last episode of the season, the scientists informed Black Beetle that humans had managed to infiltrate their ship. With the ambassador gone, Black Beetle was determined to kill the heroes. However, Aqualad, Blue Beetle and Green Beetle arrived on the command deck, and while Aqualad fought back, the other Beetles defeated the support staff. Although Black Beetle defeated Aqualad, Green Beetle attempted to reset Black Scarab by making a link, but Black overpowered him and destroyed his Scarab. Black Beetle was frustrated that Martian physiology allowed the host to survive losing the Scarab, but he was happy to kill Green Beetle through conventional means. When Black Beetle attacked Blue, he blamed him for the entire fiasco and initiated a link to destroy Blue Scarab. However, Jaime and his Scarab were united and turned the tables by destroying Black Scarab instead. In the process, Jaime discovered Black's plan to destroy Earth. In the end, Superman and the Green Lanterns of Earth accompanied the Reach flagship to orbit and joined the rest of the Reach fleet to transport them to Oa to stand trial before the Guardians of the Universe. During the journey, the scientist voiced her frustration to the ambassador and now scarabless Black Beetle, stating that she should have been allowed to complete her research into the scarab going off mode, but they silenced her with their glares. Throughout the season, the character does not refer to himself as Black Beetle, but instead is given the name by Wonder Girl. The voice of the character was provided by writer and actor Kevin Grievous. The Rise of Evil, a deep dive into the most iconic Black Beetle comics in DC history. In the present day, Black Beetle appears in the comics of Booster Gold, Volume 2, in 2009. He makes a comeback by attacking Booster Gold and the new Batman in the Batcave. However, he quickly gets away by traveling back in time, and his actions alter the course of events, leading to the death of Dick Grayson, who was the Robin at the time. Booster Gold travels back in time to follow Black Beetle and discovers that he has teamed up with Grant Wilson in an attempt to alter the course of events that led to his defeat in the Teen Titans battle. It is revealed that Black Beetle is also working with an unidentified individual who plans to destroy the Justice League. He appears briefly in the present and reveals his identity to Jaime Reyes before taking the body of a gynoid that Jaime had just defeated. Black Beetle is portrayed as having created a new future where he has killed the Teen Titans, allowing Trigon, Raven's father, to take over the world. The actual 
motive behind his actions becomes apparent when he is witness pilfering a modified scarab from Trigon's chamber of trophies amidst a diversion provoked by an assault from Rip Hunter, Booster, and the Resilience. Black Beetle said that this modified scarab is even more potent than his own device and employs it to merge with his body, assuming the moniker Red Beetle or Scarlet Scarab in conjunction with his pre-existing technology. After that, Rip Hunter locates Black Beetle's hideout and overloads his armor with chronal energy, which appears to destroy him. However, Black Beetle is shown in the present time in El Paso, trying to take Jaime's blue beetle scarab. Jaime fights back by using Tychian particles to paralyze him, but he is forced to let Black Beetle escape because of Milagro Reyes, injuries caused by Black Beetle. In the 2010 limited comic book series Time Master's Vanishing Point, the Time Stealers discover that the Vanishing Point fortress has been destroyed. Black Beetle leads his allies to the ruined Vanishing Point and finds that Rip has imprisoned the Linear Men because they couldn't agree on how to deal with time. Black Beetle and his allies free the Linear Men and ask for their help in bringing Wave Rider back to life. However, Supernova intervenes and stops Black Beetle from creating a dystopia, sending the Time Stealers back to the present. Black Beetle manages to escape and the Linear Men chose to go with him since he freed them from imprisonment. In the desolate future of Earth, Black Beetle and the Linear Men locate Wave Rider's lifeless body. However, Black Beetle turns against the Linear Men and attempts to harness Wave Rider's power to make himself indestructible. He is prevented from doing so by Supernova and Leary Lee fuses with Wave Rider's body to become Linear Woman. In the ensuing conflict, Black Beetle attacks Supernova, but Superman and the other Time Masters arrive, causing him to flee. But before he departs, Black Beetle warns them that they will re-encounter him in the future. Unleashing the power of the Black Beetle, a guide to his abilities and strengths. Black Beetle's suit features a black scarab that resembles Jaime Reyes' scarab. He has access to several energy-based and melee weapons, thanks to the shape-shifting capabilities of his armor. The suit also gives him the ability to fly, fire energy beams from his eyes and hands, travel through time, and guard against time portal phenomena. In the Young Justice series, we witness Black Beetle effortlessly overcoming the young gang of superheroes heroes, including Superboy and Wonder Girl, who have superhuman power above the class 100 level. In a later episode, we see him battling Mongol, who is easily Superman's physical equal. We may assume that, fully perfected, the Black Beetle Scarab can bestow its bearer with the incredible superhuman strength and durability, capable of lifting or carrying hundreds of tons. Pretty impressive, right? The Black Beetle easily has greater strength than Jaime, but Reyes is sharper in many respects. Marvelous Verdict. That brings us to the end of this video. To sum up, Black Beetle is a powerful antagonist with the DC Universe, exhibiting an array of superhuman abilities and sophisticated technology that presents a daunting challenge to any superhero who faces him. He has demonstrated his ability to overcome even the most powerful members of the Young Justice team and contend with some of the mightiest beings in the DC Universe. Furthermore, the inclusion of the character in the Young Justice series generates a considerable degree of thrill and suspense. It exemplifies amplifies the caliber of intimidating adversaries that superheroes must confront. And if you like this video, hit the button and share this video with all your friends. We'll see you in the next one.